Okay, this movie will explain how to construct a receiver operating characteristic curve, or an ROC curve, that allows us to determine in a recognition memory experiment how sensitive a participant is to the difference between uh, items that they studied and items that we try to trick them with and that they never saw, but we try and get them to say that they saw. So we bring a person into the lab, they sit down in front of a computer, and we show them a series of words. And so maybe they'll see the word cat, dog, window, pupil, reason. Uh, let's say they study 10 words. And then at the end of the list, uh, there'll be a little delay, the screen will go blank, and then there will be a test period. And for the test period, we're going to give them six buttons that they can press. This is just a standard setup for recognition memory. Uh, so here they are. We're going to present them a bunch of words, some of which they studied, and some of which are new. So the studied ones are called the targets. Those are the ones that if, if they want to be right, they're going to say that, yeah, I studied that. And the uh, tricky ones are the lures. Those are new words they didn't study. And if they say they studied it, well, that's, that's an error. That's wrong. That's called a false alarm. So uh, we give them six buttons so that we can figure out how confident they are in a given response. And so let's just draw these buttons down here for our reference. And we'll label them one, two, three, four, five and six, um, and this allows us to, the participant, to give us a sense of how strong that memory is uh, that they're making the decision based on. And so the lowest response would be that I'm sure I didn't study this, I'm sure this is new. Then we might have uh, maybe new, guessing new, and then we switch over to old, and so we're saying, okay, I'm guessing old, Maybe this is old. I'm sure this is old. So six is the highest confidence um, old response. One is the highest confidence new response. And the, the whole model, the, the analysis that we do on these experiments, the interpretation of it comes from the strength theory of recognition memory, which I won't go into in great detail right now, but uh, only to say that it the model suggests that there, each word that you could present to a participant has a particular strength. The, you see that word on the screen, the memory system produces some amount of evidence that you studied it before. And these words, they're going to come from two classes, as we said, so they'll either come from the class of lures, and so... Uh, lures. And so the lures will have a certain, any given word that you pick at random that the participant hasn't seen will produce some amount of strength. Um, and so this uh, bell curve, this normal distribution, just says if we pick some word at random and present it to the participant, this is the amount, this is the likelihood that the word will have a particular amount of strength. And um, if they studied the word, however, the, uh, this is the target distribution. The words are going to be, in general, stronger. So let me just label that one. Um, bump. Targets. So the targets are, in general, stronger. They tend to have more strength because you studied them. You actually learned them. Uh, the model says that some of the targets will happen to be weak and some of the lures will happen to be strong. So it's impossible to perfectly uh, differentiate the targets from the lures. And the best you can do is set some criterion. And if the strength of a memory is greater than that criterion, you say that it was old. Otherwise, you, if the strength of the memory is lower than the criterion, you say it was new. New. Okay. So how do we approach the analysis? What is the ROC analysis? So we have two classes of responses that we're interested in. We're interested in 
the um, hits and false alarms. And so hits are when you're presented with a target and you correctly identify it as a target. And false alarms are when you're presented with a lure and you accidentally call it a target. And so we're going to make this chart of when you make a certain amount of false alarms, how many hits are you making? We'll put a point on this chart uh, to correspond to that situation. And what we're going to do is we're going to use these confidence responses to, um, even though the participant just made one set of responses in this experiment, we're going to act like we're sweeping a criterion over this strength distribution uh, by um, sort of sweeping a criterion over the set of possible responses that the participant made, and that'll become clear in a second when we actually uh, carry out the analysis. First, we start with the data. So the data from the experiment, we sat this participant down, they made 20 judgments, uh, 20 probes came up on the screen, 10 of them were targets, 10 of them were the things they studied, 10 of them were lures. The participant doesn't know which is which, but when the item comes up on the screen, they press a button. And this says how confident they were um, that the thing was something they studied old or something that they didn't study new. And so um, this is just a, the items, probe items presented in the order that the person was presented them during the test. And that's not terribly useful for us. So if we want to make our life a little easier, we can reorganize these, uh, just get all the targets next to each other and then get all the lures next to each other. And so if there are 10 targets, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 10 lures, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, then we can uh, sort them basically and that'll make it easier for us to calculate okay how many hits did the person make, uh, how many false alarms did they make for a given level of confidence. So okay so we're gonna start sorting these things so we've got some sixes for the targets uh, I see three, one, two, three uh, check, check, check and then there are going to be some fives for the target. So one, two, five, five, uh, target five, check, target five, check. This will save us time in a moment. Fours for the targets. One, two, I think there's just two. One, two. So there were two targets the person said four, two. And now here's where the person was actually wrong based on the responses. So uh, there were one, two targets the person said three, two, and one target the person said press the button, the two button. So check, 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 and that's all the targets. We'll do the same sorting procedure for the lures. Uh, it looks like they didn't make any uh, six button presses for a lure, but they did make a participant did make a five and uh, a four. Looks like there's only one lore for response. Let's see. Uh, how many times did they say three when a lore was presented? So guessing that it's something new that they didn't study. One, two, three, four. So three, 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 three. One. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then twos, one, two, three, one, two, three times they said two, and one time they said one. So there's the one, two, two, two. We accounted for all of them. So now we can um, carry out our ROC analysis.